guys, this is Svetlana from Kamui Cosplay and as you know, I absolutely love working together with video game companies to create cosplay tutorials based on their IPs. So I was really excited when Electronic Arts contacted me to create a costume from their new game Anthem. I mean, big weapons and cool space outfits, how could I say no to that? <laughs> So in this first of three making of videos, I'm going to show you how I created the super cool hammerhead rifle completely out of cheap EVA foam. You can also download this blueprint completely for free if you go to kamuicosplay.com just in case you want to build this baby as well. Oh, what a coincidence! I also have books about how to make guns and rifles out of EVA foam and also how to apply professional paint jobs on cool looking props. So if you're already on my website, check out my cosplay crafting books as well. <laughs> and now let's make a rifle. Pew pew pew! This screenshot that we took in the game's VIP demo was our main reference. Instead of just drawing a simple blueprint, however, Benny began rebuilding the prop in Fusion 360. This program allowed him to create a 3D file based on our 2D screenshot. Check out Benny's Fusion 360 tutorial video on our YouTube channel if you want to see how he does it. Once he was done, he could now export 2D blueprints of all the different views. This way I was able to see every angle of the rifle and not just the side. Next he printed the main blueprint over several pages. I only had to tape them together and cut out the drawing. By scaling the grip to fit my hand, we were also able to figure out the final size of the prop. Looked good! Now I separated the blueprint into its main parts and began tracing the body onto high density EVA foam. To cut everything out, I used a sharp box cutter. I admit however that this step was quite boring, so I switched to our laser cutter instead. This way I was able to get the base shape a lot faster. Since it didn't all fit into the laser cutter, each layer consisted out of two pieces. What? Wow, this would have taken me forever. My glue of choice was contact cement. You can find links to all tools and materials in the video description below. I applied the glue with a little squeeze bottle, since it's a lot easier this way. A thin layer of glue on both sides is enough to build up layer after layer of the main shape. I also used my Dremel to clean up the edges properly. Next, I placed the thick foam pipe into the front part. So, this was the base. The following steps involved a lot of sanding along the edges and adding more parts to the sides of the rifle. Apart from the base, all parts were cut out by hand again. I simply separated the area I wanted to build from the blueprint and traced it onto mostly 5 or 10 mm thick foam. Then I stacked more layers to get the thickness I needed, cleaned up the edges and glued this part onto the rifle. I know, I could have just laser cut all of the parts, but as long as it's not too repetitive, I truly enjoy making things with my hands. Plus, I want to show you that no fancy tools and materials are necessary to build something cool. You just need a good blueprint to help you to figure it all out. Next to the grip. This one was a little bit more work. The base piece was pretty thick and I had to mark the area I would need to sand into shape. I roughly carved the material with my box cutter and then shaped the rest with my Dremel. Ta-da! Nice and round! Next I added some details and attached the grip directly onto the gun. Following that I kept adding more elements to the rifle. This one was supposed to become the magazine. So far so good! Oh, and this one is the Dremel tip I often use to clean up the edges. With it, I'm able to sand over multiple layers at once and can work much faster. And this part belongs here. 
For the Picatinny rails, I cut out long stripes out of 2 and 5 mm foam. Then they got rounded a bit and glued together. Afterwards, I cut everything into tiny pieces, added some more 2 mm foam, covered the top of the rifle with glue and attached it all piece by piece. This took a while, but I really liked the result. Next, I placed more 2 mm layers of details to the magazine. Well, and Midna just took a nap. I got all of these pieces just by cutting apart my blueprint. One of my favorite new tools is this circle cutting thing. You just place it, rotate it and get a lovely circle cut. I also really enjoy the saw tip for my Dremel. Just make sure to always wear protection. Both of these parts will be placed at the front, but first I had to build the base following another blueprint. Without having different angles of my blueprint, I just would have to guess everything here. Well, and there goes the circle cut and PVC pipe you saw before. Next, I just needed another weirdly shaped piece to complete the front of the rifle. Then there was this little thing, which I'm sure will just fall off at some point. And these elements here will be barely visible, since they will be covered in fabric later. Benny just guessed these shapes as they were super blurry in the screenshot. I mean, nobody will notice if they look like that or not, so it's okay. Following this, I marked where I wanted all the rivets to be and then used different tips of my Dremel to create them in multiple sizes. Now onto the scope on top. This one was a bit tricky to figure out, so I cut out a bunch of foam and stacked it together to get the right thickness. Once I was confident in my construction, I glued it together and dremeled it smooth. After I got some more details and rivets, I placed the finished piece onto the rifle. Next, it was time for these side rail thingies. Seriously, I have no idea what they are called. After tracing the pattern onto foam and cutting it out, I separated them at their bending points. Then I sanded down some angles, which I just guessed and hoped it would work out. I glued my experiment together, sanded the edges a bit and hey, it looked good. I wanted to remove them again for priming and painting, so I just attached them with a single drop of glue for now. The build was pretty much done now. All just simple and cheap foam so far. It weighs basically nothing. Now just these two weird twisted pipes were missing. Instead of just 3D printing them, I also wanted to make these by hand. So I heated up some Warbler leftovers, rolled them together and made a super long bratwurst sausage. Using my blueprint for reference, I started bending every angle step by step. Every time I let the Warbler completely cool down and heated up only a small area I wanted to bend. Ice water helped me to cool it down quickly again. Well, and this was the result. Building these things was clearly not easy. I drilled some huge holes to place them, added the trigger which I totally forgot and finally the whole build was done. Yay! The next step was to heat seal the foam for priming and get rid of the extras again. To fill up some of the foam seams, Benny used a product called Flexi Filler. He just added some with his finger, spread it over the foam and smoothed it out with some water. He mostly applied it where I had to stack plenty of layers. Once everything dried, I primed the foam with three layers of Plasti Dip. The rifle didn't fully fit into our spray booth, so this step took a little bit longer. All nice, smooth and shiny. Benny began his painting process with a soft layer of gunmetal airbrush color. Just a little dusting. Next he added shadows with black. Looked better already. 
Following this, he applied the colorful parts with acrylics and a simple brush. The yellow area at the front and back needed to be a little bit more rough, however. To make it look like the paint chipped off, he also added some silver to the edges. Now he dabbed with black paint to get a rough texture, added more silver to highlight the edges, some brown to make it look aged, and finally a coat of spray varnish to protect his work. Time for me to glue on the missing elements again. Almost there! Now let me give my rifle a comfy raincoat. To get the pattern I had to wrap my entire prop in plastic wrap and duct tape. Then I drew on all the shapes I needed cut them free and grabbed some fitting for leather. I traced all the shapes, cut them out and sewed along the edges. I also placed some eyelets here and there with a hammer and a rubber inside the piece for the back. The fabric parts were secured with press dots at the bottom by the way. I also added some drops of fabric glue to keep everything in place. Well, and the pipe things needed a good amount of hot glue. Last but not least, I made a few additional decorative foam pieces, painted them and attached them with some belts. Now Benny added a good amount of weathering all over the raincoat. Looks a lot more real, right? And finally, my hammerhead rifle from Anthem was done. It's really lightweight and the materials maybe cost me 50 bucks. Foam props are awesome, you should try it as well. I really love making props out of EVA foam. With the right paint job, they look like really heavy and dangerous. In real though, they are super lightweight and super affordable. And as you know, if there's one thing no cosplayer has, then it's money. If you still have any questions, just leave us a comment below. And if you like this video, subscribe to our channel or support us on Patreon. In the next video, I'm going to show you how I created my freelancer outfit you see here in the background. So, see you next time. Bye-bye.